All right, we are back at Paul H. Mews Dragon Stadium waiting for the teams to do their run-through. And at this time, we're going to have the prayer. And then that will be followed by the Junction City Band doing the national anthem. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today, God. God, thank you for allowing us to be here this evening, Lord. Thank you for providing life for us, Lord. God, we pray for each one of these teams tonight as they take the field that you will protect them and keep them safe. And God, we also pray that as fans and supporters of each of these schools, God, that you will show us how to act in a way that honors Christ, God. Win or lose, God, we just ask that all that we do honor and brings glory to your Son, Jesus Christ. God, thank you again. Thank you in advance for providing a safe game. And we ask for your favor to be upon this stadium tonight as we play and enjoy a time together with friends and families. In the name and the power of Jesus Christ, amen. Now we have the National Anthem Alumni Band that happened to the 2003 alumni. Oh, say can you see was Miss Amanda Hampton, a 2003 graduate of Junction City, doing the National Anthem and doing a very, very good job. And let's talk a little football now. Rise in Junction City, the 21st meeting between these two teams. Junction City won last year. And this would be, I believe, the second year in a row they have been as a conference opponents. I believe last year Rising had rejoined. Yes, last year they had rejoined the conference after the realignment, and Junction City won that game by a score, I believe, of 28 to 9. I'm not sure I'd double check and see. But before that, they had met in the season opener as non conference opponents, with Rising winning both of those. Rising holds the edge in the series 14 to 6. All six of the Dragon wins have come under the tutelage of head coach David Carpenter. Tonight, of course, this game, this early in the season, is huge. The winner does have the inside track toward the conference. Tyler still, of course, plenty of games to play, needless to say. But the top three, four teams you got to look out for, besides Genesee and Rising, Beard and Strong, and the Dragons catch all three of them in a row. But tonight, you got to take care of business first, and, of course, it's the Rising Wildcats. Junction City last week, you could say it was a very good performance. You could also say it was a very long performance, about a four-hour ball game or close. Hopefully tonight won't be that long. The Dragons displayed a, you could say, balanced attack, 225 yards passing, 199 on the ground. Randall Holyfield had perhaps the best starting debut for a Dragon quarterback in a long, long time. He was 10 of 21, 225 yards, four touchdowns. And he has a vast array of receivers to throw to, Jarkel Brown, Sailor Wilson, Jamario Bell, and Jay Mitchell, I believe all catching touchdown passes. And you could go ahead and throw in a couple more guys, Bo Hux, and Madison Matthews. Unfortunately, I don't believe they will have uh, Matthews available as uh, he was hurt last week. 
and we wish him a speedy recovery. Both of those two young men, by the way, caught some key passes late in the third quarter, early, I believe early fourth quarter, somewhere in that time frame, and looked very good. I mean, very good doing it. But it's the running game Junction City's known for, and Mr. Jaquise Dancy put on a show again. 14 carries, 161 yards, three touchdowns, and had one touchdown run that people are still talking about. As one guy described it, ran like he was angry at the world, running over, well, breaking three tackles and running over two guys on his way into the end zone. Mr. Dancy will need to have a big game tonight, and, of course, the dragon passing attack will have to be on. And if they can come up with another 424 yards of offense, they have a good chance of pulling this game out. Now, Ryzen comes into this game off of a loss to a very, very good Fordyce team, losing uh, their traditional rival, you would say, to open the season with. Lost it by a score of 28-21, but a hard-fought game nonetheless and a game they could have easily won. Like I said, the winner tonight, they get that inside track right off the bat toward the conference title. But, you know, a lot of games to play, but you would like to be in that position. Junction City coming into tonight has been ranked number one now, I believe, for seven or eight consecutive weeks going back into last season, maybe longer than that. I was trying to check and see. So playing in a game like this is no big deal to the Dragons and really for Ryzen either. So both of these teams should be able to handle that. We're going to step out again for just a few minutes, and then we'll be right back with the opening kickoff. This is the Dragon Sports Network on Ustream. Okay, we are back waiting the coin toss here. The captains are on the field for Junction City, number 9, Robert Armstrong, and number 10, Bo Hux. Uh, Ryzen did not provide us with a uh, roster, so we'll try to figure them out as we go. And right now waiting on the coin toss from the officials. Uh, like I said before, this is going to be a big game, not only a top 10 matchup, but the early leader in the 8AA conference. Junction City comes into tonight on a 17 game conference winning streak. They also come in with a 15 game regular season streak. So for the Dragons a good a good uh, start to the season. Okay, we got the there we go. Mr. Brewer helped us out here. We got the roster for rising now. Their captains are number 50, uh, Easton Molex. 
And number 60, I can't tell. They kind of got me blocked there. Can you make it out? 60. 44. DeAndre Barnett and, and 64. Tristan Ward. Captains for Rising. Rising won the toss. They declined in the second half. Junction City will receive. And like I said before, Junction City comes in with a lot on the line here as far as streaks, what they have going and everything. But it's a sign that the program is back up after kind of 2010, 2011, kind of slipped a little, if you want to call getting to the semifinal slipping. But a lot of people thought, well, you know, look like they're kind of down. The Dragons are kind of down. But they are back, winning state last year. And tonight, preparing to defend their state title uh, once again and conference title. Okay, we're waiting now for the teams to do their run-throughs. And then we'll get some football going here, folks. And while we got a chance, would like to do a, a few shout-outs real quick. Uh, one, I'd like to go to Miss Joy Muse. She has been sick lately, not been doing very well. Of course, she is the wife of uh, the gentleman who the field is named after, Coach Muse. And hopefully she'll get doing better and get a speedy re- have a speedy recovery. Uh, both teams are on the field now. And we're about set to do a little football as soon as we get everybody clear. And hopefully this is not a uh, bad sign, but I believe that's the same officiating crew we had last week. So hopefully we won't be in for another four-hour game, though. Some of the guys from the 2003 team who was honored before the start of the game tonight that made it tonight was uh, Kobe McKinnon, Trayvon Fields, Drew McKinnon, Charlie Hanza, J.J. Easter, T.J. Thurkill, and Jeremy Spooner. And I tell you what, you take old Jeremy and Kobe and put them back in bad. Both of them look like they still could uh, knock somebody's head off. They still look like they could play a little football. All right, we're about set to go, folks. This is what we're here for, Dragon football. Deep for the Dragons, number three, Jaquiz Dancy. Flanking him, up, or up, the front man in, up in front of him, number 22, Sailor Wilson. And I believe number 31, Mario Hayes. Number four, right in front of him, Josh Armstrong. And a young man I forgot to mention last week setting a school record, and this is not a mistake, 29 tackles. At three quarterback sacks and two tackles for losses. And I wouldn't mind if he had another game like that tonight. Okay, waiting on the rising kicker. And it is a nice evening. Hopefully it will cool on off some more. It's a nice evening for some good class double-A hardcore football. Okay, here we go. Official finally gets out of the way. And we're underway. Kind of a squib uh, up kick. It's going to be fumbled and recovered. Well, the fumble again, but Rising has got it at the 35-yard line, and that is not how you want to start the game. The up man, number seven, I believe, Keandre Evans, couldn't get the handle on it, and the ball took a big bounce, and Rising recovers at the 35. So the Dragon defense has got to go to work immediately. Mm, that hurt. Rising lines up in the split back. 19, Nathan Wilson, the quarterback. Hands as a double reverse. Gives the number seven, who is Chris Leak. He will pick up about five as he gets inside the 30. Tackled by... I believe 57 Owens, 40 Bale was in there. I believe Mason was also in there on the tackle along with uh, 67. And that is Marquis Singleton. Brings up a second and five. Ball's right inside the Dragon 30. 11.25 to go as we just got underway here from Dragon Stadium. Here's a handoff again. This is to 28. 
And I cannot pronounce that first name, to be honest with you. Last name is Broughton. He'll pick up about, let's see, where they market it. They market it near the 20, pick up about three, market it near the 26 yard line. So let's call it third and a short two. You need a stop here. Dragons fumble to opening kickoff, giving Rising the ball at the 35. Third and two. And there was movement on the rising line, but I see no flags. Let's see what we got here. I believe he did get the first down. Okay, there is a flag down now. Good. Okay. It is a first down for rising. And they will mark it at about the 24-yard line. 10.44 10.44 to go in the first quarter. Rising on the move already. From the 24, first and 10. Man in motion is a give. Fakes it. Quarterback will keep it, and he is hit hard at about the 22 on the tackle for Junction City. Owens, Hayes getting in there, making the tackle. Mason kind of anchoring down that middle there to keep it from getting very much. It's only going to be a pickup of two, so it's second and two. And that's what we're going to need from the Dragons. Rising, keeping the ball on the ground. They split one out wide to the right. Second and eight. Here's a pitch to number six. That is Oliver, and he is near a first down. They may have it. Let's see. It's very, very close. Going to be third and two. So, again, the Dragons needing a big stop here early in the game. Could not tell who made the tackle. It's far side of the field here. All right, third and two. Full house backfield. Quarterback handoff to 28, and he is going to be... Road down close. I don't know if he got it or not. Very close. Robert Armstrong on the tackle. And Taylor Mason also on the tackle. And he, uh, from the indication of the chain gang, did not get the first down. They got a fourth down marker up fourth. And it's going to be a short one at about the 14-yard line of Junction City. The Cats are on the uh, far hash mark. So... This will be interesting. And I'll keep an eye on that quarterback, 19, Wilson. He's been keeping and making some good moves. And, again, there is much, I, he's got to throw the flag there, and he does. I was a while ago they moved early and no call. But this time, all right, let's see. But they're going to call it, folks, on the Dragons. Mm. And that will hurt. That gives the Cats a first down. at about the nine-yard line. So it'll be first and goal for the Cats from the nine. And I believe the guy will see move because, like I said, they're on the far side. I believe it's the center move, which he can do that. It's a keeper again by the quarterback. Wilson, he's going to go to about the five-yard line where he's gang tackled by several Dragons. Bale getting up off the pile. Hayes. Gibson. And Armstrong. Josh Armstrong. So it'll be second and goal from about the five. Wildcats got a split backfield. Now it's full house. Wilson rolls out, looking, throws, and it's going to be a touchdown rising. Good little play there to call. He'd been rolling out, keeping it, and he hit a man in the flat for the score. And with 7.53 to go in the first quarter, the Wildcats strike first. And not a good start for the Dragons. You didn't like to see this happen. 31 for Ryzen will be on the hold. Andrew Roberts kicking for the extra point will be... Let's see who the kicker is here. We can get a number. Six, ain't it? Oliver will be the uh, try the PAT. 
Snaps good, kicks down, balls down, kick is up and good. So, like I said, 7.53 to go in the first quarter. It's rising 7, Junction City, nothing. And that's not how the head dragon wanted this game to start, I can promise you. What the dragon's got to do now, though, number one, hold on the ball and get a good drive going, get the ball and dance his hand, and let's see what can happen. And the kick return unit's already on the field for Junction City. The up men for the Dragons on the kick return unit, number 53, Matthew Freeman, 55, Blake McClellan, 10, Bo Hux, and number 9, Robert Armstrong. And let's see, we got one more joining them up there, and I could not, I believe that is 21, Smith, Devontae Smith. Dancy is back deep, flanked by Wilson and Hayes. Number four, Josh Armstrong, standing in front of him about 10, 15 yards up, awaiting the kick. And beside Mr. Armstrong, Keandre Evans. Wildcats moved at 35 yards, and I believe they did in about eight plays. And they took uh, just a little over four minutes off the clock. So, Rising lines up to kick it again. And let's see if they do the same they did a while ago. They had one guy look like he was going to kick it, and another one hit it. And it kind of, I think it's what, yeah, they do the same thing again, and it's a bad, bouncy kick. This time it's fair caught at the 35 by Evans. So the Dragon offense will go to work. First and 10 from the 35. Let's see if Junction City can get something going. Quarterback Randall Holyfield, as I mentioned in the pregame show earlier, 10 of 21 last week for 225 yards, four touchdowns. Joining him in the backfield, number three, Dancy, last week 161 yards rushing. And the Dragons open up with two split. Dancy lining up beside Holyfield. They bring that's number... Two, Brown in motion, give it to him. He'll get outside for about two, maybe three yards. Brings up a second and seven. Well, the Dragons start out kind of spreading the field a little bit. Or I say spreading the field. They're kind of stretching the field a little bit, making Ryzen be aware of uh, the split guys who... I can tell you right now, folks, they've got some speed. Now Junction City brings out twins, split both sides of the field. Here's a quick snap, or a quick a snap. is thrown to number six, Rogers, and he drops the ball and brings up a third. And let's call it a long seven. We'll make it eight yards. Go ahead. Third and eight from the 37-yard line. Junction City needs a first down here. So hopefully he can kind of settle down here. The offense needs to get in a rhythm and maybe we can get a first down here and get things going. Again, twins split out. Holyfield drops back, looks. He's going to fling it deep. He's got a man and go oh, overthrew him at about the 25-yard line. Josh Armstrong had got behind the defense. 